I did a, a solo album 22 years ago in a studio owned by a songwriter called Dan Penn, who's from Muscle Shoals. And we did it on a 16 track analog tape machine. But we had everyone in the studio playing live, including Memphis horns and the Muscle Shoals rhythm section. And they could all play, they could do it because they've been doing it for years. That's how they always record it. I'd be a little shy of doing it again, unless I had the musicians that I knew could do that. Musicians today have a different attitude towards that. In 1989, I bought an Atari ST computer that had MIDI in and out on it. Didn't have a big keyboard and a, oh, a little cathode raised tube. It, it wasn't so, like hooking USB up. It's not like plug and play now. <laughs> no, no. And I discovered MIDI, which I fell in love with because MIDI was invented so that one keyboard could talk to another keyboard. And then somebody realized that if you went in the middle of it and recorded it, you could record what the MIDI was sending out and then play it back. The first time I saw Key Editor on Cubase, I just went, wow, this is amazing. I can lengthen the notes, I can move the notes around, I can change it from a major to a minor. It was like, yeah, wow, absolutely. it's amazing. I really got into MIDI quite heavily. Um, and I was doing a lot of TV and film and I produced a, a guy called Gene Pitney and after that album was done with MIDI. And my friend Charlie Morgan, who played drums with Elton for 14 years, he's quite a techno guy. And he had an electronic drum kit, and we started playing it in as MIDI, but of samples on an Akai sampler, which was quite interesting. Would you use like just the keyboard keys to trigger the drums? Is that what you're saying? No, he helped with the development of the Simmons electronic drum kits. Wow. And so he would bring the the little pad that he had, which had six pads on it, uh -huh. and, a, and a little s switcher for the hi-hat and the bass drum. And he would play that into my cue bass because the feel is what we wanted. Sure. So I would use that as a quantize for the other instruments I was putting in. So that it all was relative to his drums. Because if you look at the drums on a MIDI map, for instance, of, of a good drum, a really good drum, it looks like it's all over the place. I mean, it doesn't look bang, bang, bang. It, it goes up and down slightly in places. And that's where you get a trapped breathing. If you put on the beginning of Honky Tonk Women by the Rolling Stones, and then take the needle off and put it on the end, the difference in the tempo is scary. <laughs> it really speeds up as it goes along. But I think that's what makes it breathe. It gives um, it the human feel when everything's not perfect on the grid. Yeah, and sometimes the grid is great. When I was doing the TV and film stuff in the, in the early 90s, it was great. But then I went out on the road with Mick Taylor, the guitar player that was with the Stones, and that, there was no computers or nothing. It was just a band. It was great because the feels would change from night to night. And you go out there with a sequencer on a gig and it's going to be the same every night and that can be scary. Now, I've been involved in those situations where there's a backing track and it's really hard because sometimes it feels like it's dragging away and right. then other times it feels like it's too fast because your moods tend to dictate the feel of the song and the right. track but then of course digital audio came into being because back then what we were doing was we were syncing up analog tape machines to the midi because you couldn't record vocals midi sure right <laughs> so we had a, we had tape machines that we would sync up to the MIDI and syncing those tape machines with the MIDI on the computer was a nightmare because okay. the sync would drop out. One of the tracks had to be the, the Simpty code and right. sometimes it would drop out and you know, you'd have to do it all again. It was a nightmare. And then digital audio reared its head and everything changed from then on.